Hello, everyone. I'm Mori Zhao. Thank you for coming today, despite the inclement weather with the downpour. I'm indeed truly grateful for your presence. I want to talk about the appeal of cars. I want to liven up the Tokyo Motor Show. This event is being convened by Morizo, a car-loving person. Today, I'm truly delighted and grateful that so many people showed up. I also appreciate all of those who are watching by webcast. I invite you to enjoy this occasion all the way to the end. The car I was in, just in, was a 70 Corolla, 1600 GT, fourth generation Corolla. That was the very first car but that I ever bought. It was 990,000 yen. And it's a car filled with unforgettable memories of my youth. There's always one there in someone's story. And I think that's what cars are all about. And that's what I want them to be about from now on and forever. Cars connected all of you and me. All of you do have some relationship with Morizo. And it's cars too that give people a chance to meet. My wish is that today will become a new car story for all of us. So let's have a good time. Now, without further ado, I would like to have good conversation about cars, and I would like to share my true feelings with me. And from here on, I would like to invite an important person from my circle of friends uh, who loves cars and who allows me to talk my own intentions, Ms. Maoko Kotani, the TV caster. Watch your steps, Ms. Kodani. Good morning. It's been a while. Previously, it was in Athens. With respect to Olympic Games, both of us were involved with the kickoff events in relation to Olympic and Paralympic Games. The Paralympians must be able to fully enjoy the event, and so the Start Your Impossible is a new campaign, and the kickoff event took place in Athens, Greece. And we had a conversation together, which was recorded, and our plan was to convey that. I was in my own office, in the head office of TMC in Toyota City, and Ms. Kotani and Mr. Luruwa and also Gil Pratt of TRI were in Athens. We had fun. A bit difficult, wasn't it? But we still enjoyed it. I mean, you can't feel the other person breathing, but the moment you appeared in a satellite relay, the, all the audience was all excited. You were alone in Tokyo? No, of course, we had many staff taking that, so I was a bit embarrassed because I was surrounded by all those staff. Well, anyway, every time we are together, we have a wonderful setting. The previously, it was your own office as president. How do you find today's event? And the two, those of these two guys, they are employees of Toyota. They are not comedians. And we have a uh, group called Recreation Research Division. And I was watching them on video, and that really uplifted me. And they were enjoying themselves. They are located right there, I guess. They are taking their own photos, right? But both of them 
let me remind you once again, they are employees. I hear that those guys are employees, but shy. No, they're not shy at all, as you can tell. But before coming here, in front of such an audience, to them, this is the first time to have that stint in this audience. So probably it represented the Koshi, and that's where high school baseball teams compete on the nationwide competition. So they probably they must have many trying events. What sort of a conversation you're going to have? And they look a bit alike, but not completely alike. One is like sauce, and the other is like show you. So probably we can put them right here, right? What is this? This is New Brookring. In Germany, the, there is a place called New Brookring in Germany. And last year, was it last year that you participated in race? Maybe last year. Nowadays, uh, things keep me so busy that I can hardly keep pace of what happened last year and what's happening this year. So this must have been last year? Yes, I think so. It was last year. Right. And Akio also participated in the race there. And so this is the place that you have very deep feelings about, emotions about neurobrickering. And what is this? Neurobrickering is the 25 kilometer race course. And on the north course, the, the Grand Prix course, there is a hotel called Dorint. And I stay in that hotel every time I participate in a Brooklyn race. And there is a small bar in Dorint Hotel. So this uh, reproduces that bar. And every time after this 24-hour uh, enduring race is over, many teams get together to have the final party. Our mechanics on Toyota, they've been up uh, 48 hours before the race, uh, tuning up vehicles. And all the drivers, are they standing by for 24 hours? Sometimes they take a short break, nap. But after all this race is over, they are exhausted physically. But they do have, all of them do have a strong sense of accomplishment. And at the same time, all these teams, in the case of 24-hour says they are competing against each other. When, but once the race is over and they get together here, they just have a series of toasts. So we, as a team coming from Asia, the fact that we've been able to allow to be a part of this uh, owes to Mr. Betts of Aston Martin. He was a CEO of Aston Martin back then. And if it were an ordinary company, CEO probably plays golf. But in our case at Aston Martin, the CEO participates in race. So I drove Aston Martin and Betts drove Toyota's uh, drove Lexus. So we switched cars in participating in the race. And so after the race, we got together here in this very room or very bar. What is this? It's all wet. Oh, because the ice melted. So things happen, you know. Don't wring it off, just leave it as it is. So what I usually do is to use this white glove using this. I mean, this should have been dry, it was supposed to be dry, but it's completely drenched. And this is Jaeger, which we usually use for toast. So you sure you can drink Jaeger? Uh, actually, this is black wood on tea, so nothing happens. Don't be worried. But it may be true. It may be true, Jaeger, not wood on tea. Is it? Really? It's real liquor? This is wet and this one's wet? Oh, my God. I can't stand this. So let's have a toast. And everybody, please raise your glasses, pretending that you ha do have one. So it was strong. It is black wood on tea, actually, after all. Can I ask a question? I mean, this really concerns me. This is all wet and fully drenched. You have a photo of Mr. Naruse up there, right? And Akio next to him. 
in racing suits. Today you are Morizo, right? Yes. For Morizo, is it the name that you uh, have adopted for participating in a race? Okay, let me help you. I mean, to participate in such a race, you have to have the C-class license internationally recognized. And you have to register yourself with a specific name. And that name is publicly disclosed. And back then, when I decided to participate in race, and if I use my own family name, Toyoda, I'm the third generation Toyoda, the third generation, having had no difficulty, it's just an um, spoiled kid, and the third generation is to ruin everything. So no good positive image of the third generation. So given that, in a sense, I was faced with all bashing words. Back then, what I had in mind was, well, after all, Toyota is a car maker. And it's about our own product. What's wrong with me driving our own product? But nobody really agreed with me or accepted me participating in race. And that made me feel real gravity of my own family name, Akio Toyoda. But also, I wanted to be left alone. And that's why I chose or came up with the name Morizo as a driver's name. So Morizo back then was used to hide myself, so to speak. Maybe Morizo was uh, to hide me, but it's been almost over 10 years since I have been associating myself with the name Morizo. And today, I'm convening this event as Morizo. But more recently, Morizo has been able to draw out the real image of Akio Toyoda. If you hear Akio Toyoda, you hear about present of Toyota, and I have to wear that garment as a CEO of Toyota. But Morizo can make me just one car lover, and Morizo allows me to do that. And today, the Tokyo Motor Show is going on, and in conjunction with that, we are holding this event. And under normal days, I hold a press briefing in conjunction with the motor show for the first time. I mean, I have been involved with Tokyo Motor Show, and I was making an uh, appearance there. But this year, for the first time, I didn't take stage there. The serious reason is that I wanted to appeal how international to the motor company is, corporation is. Serious? There is no reason that you're not serious about? I mean, Tokyo Auto Salon and those, together with racers, I showed up in those occasions. But those are days open to public. But in the case of a Tokyo Motor Show, I usually participate in media people. But given the advent and prevalent use of SNS, all of those people in the audience deliver their news throughout the world. And therefore, I just wanted to have conversation directly with those broadcasters, wanting to find out what would happen as a result of that. And when I talked about that, this a sort of event was concocted and planned. So those in the audience are consumers. They are also media as well. They are stakeholders. So they are playing multiple roles here. So, so uh, the races you love is now over. And this is a place you have a good time after the race. Naruse san, what about him? Did he like this? No, he's a very serious guy. So in a place like that, and when I was having fun, ah, he scolded me because he's your mentor, right? He is my mentor, right? And before the race, when the race circuit is open, and as you are waiting for this um, hall to be opened, I think you are putting signs. I mean, in your book ring on the race course, you can put your own signs there or signatures there. And Mr. Nari said didn't like that. How, what a pity putting such signs on the course was how he felt about it. But this is a for unforgettable place, right? You have those helmets. Those are the ones you actually use. This is the very first one I use, I guess. It's heavy. So wearing those helmets, you participate. This is the second one. And this is a helmet for rally. For rally races, 
This part is open. And this one. This is the microphone, and the microphone is enclosed there. It looks very nice. So this is the one I'm using for rally. It says Morizo right here. And this is carbon, made of carbon. Carbon? You make helmets in carbon? That makes it light. Compare the weight with this one. I have to see how different they are. Yeah, yeah, true. This one's lighter. But it's well made, both of them. And this protects my life. So, so there are many things that I would like to talk about or ask you about. So these are the seats that we would like to sit in. Interesting, isn't it? This is made of a tire. This is wheel of a tire, the table is made of that, and what you see here is a braking system, the piston there. Usually they are located in Gamagori. In Gamagori, for Toyota Group, there is this facility called Kizuna, the facility for the entire Toyota Group, and all the car enthusiasts the things that car enthusiasts love to have. The components and parts of cars, the seats also come from cars, and they are on display in that Kizuna facility. So today in this program, there are many things that I'd like to ask of Morizo, san or many comments addressed to Morizo san So we received many questions in advance. Is it OK? Please go ahead. Uh, I'll answer anything honestly. For example, what did I have for breakfast? I mean, some person came up with something very interesting. It says, this is the first time that I see Morizo-san in person. So in the sense, it is my Morizo-san Memorial Day. Chihara Harada-san, are you there? Over there in white shirt, I think. She's right over there. So this is the first time that she is going to meet with you for the first time. How do you feel about that? So this is your first time to see me in person? Now, where do you see me? Not in person. I'm an employee. Oh, you're an employee. So through materials of the company or on TV. So it's a rather remote being for you, right? So you look at Morizo-san at the materials, the company information. Not, do you have corporate gathering? I mean, how many employees do you think we have? 350,000 throughout the world. We can't get them all together in one location. He's very good looking, isn't he? Yes, indeed. That's totally subjective. So can I go on? So Morizo-san, so this is Morizo-san Memorial Day. I feel a bit embarrassed when I hear that, so let's move on. Even in the company, as much as possible, I try to make a surprise visit to different departments or different locations within the company. In the case of a Relay Marathon, I was there, and when runners are running, you just went into the rows and you distributed your stickers to the families. If it is pre-announced that I'll be there, people tend to get ready for that, get nervous, some of them. My role in the company, yeah, let me be a bit serious, Take make decisions, decisions and take responsibility. Those are my responsibility. And I can take only three seconds for doing that, to be able to make decision in three seconds and when people come to me, please decide on this. You have this real world you have, and right in front of you, you have this person making report on the paper. I want to see the gap between that. And to capture that gap, I really have to know pe how hard people are working in everyday circumstances. And no matter what sort of decision I make, I cannot make everybody happy since I became president, especially I had to make decisions which made some people really sad and unhappy. So including that aspect, I wanted to know what the real world is like. And that's why I make surprise visits to various parts of the company. So you may receive 
him in surprise. Which department do you belong to? Higashifuji? What's the name of the department? Higashifuji Electronic Advanced Development Department. So I'll keep that in mind, try to memorize that. Thank you very much. So let's move on to the next question. Morizo san, did you find a car that caught your attention at Tokyo Motor Show? Matsu, Machi Matsutaka? Are you there in the audience? So did any car caught your attention? Yes, of course. It just so happened that I am acting chairman of uh, Japan Automobile Manufacturers Association. So in that capacity, uh, I had to play a leadership role at our T Tokyo Motor Show. I wasn't in that capacity uh, when this event was planned. And so what did I do as an acting chairman? I visited various booths of uh, other car makers to add excitement, and I posted those in my Instagram. So let me share with you some of them. Just go back one page. This is Chukyo TV was covering this. Masa Yamamoto, the comedian, right? He's in the car with you, right? So the Chukyo camera was making coverage of this, and I joined that. So this was really broadcast? I don't know. It may be. I knew that we were covered by the uh, Chukyo TV. So that happens often. This is Mazda, uh, Mr. Kogai, president of Mazda. And we had our photos. Uh, I had my photos taken in front of his car, and Mr. Kogai approached me. L nice looking, right? So this shows the design concept of the Mazda cars going forward. This is Monkey by Honda. The I thought Monkey is much smaller, but with this generation, it has become a bit bigger. So not just cars, but you also look at all motorcycle as well. Can you show me Super Cub? This is Suzuki. This is President Suzuki of a Suzuki Motor Corporation. I look rather overbearing with my hand on his shoulder. Uh, chairman is his father. And this is Hino's bus. So th these are very well received in Instagram pages. And if I do this, some people tend to mimic that. So people, some people do get into the car and had their photos taken. But my fr number one recommendation amongst many cars is or was Century. Century. Do you have a new Century? Yes. After 20 years or so, Toyota is going to have a complete model change of Century. So it goes through complete redesigning. In my own thinking, when we talk about Century, in the case of Toyota, honorary chairman, chairman, those are the people who would ride a Century. In my case, I'll be driving Alphard, or oh, my chauffeur drives me in chauffeur. But for many years, when the Century was being developed, I asked them that make sure that Century can be a car that I feel comfortable driving myself. Has, have you made it com casual? Still, it's a very serious car with a great design. GRMMC, that is Gazoo Racing MMC specification century, something that I want made. This is a great news. This is the first time that I announced this. But could you explain that? What do you mean by that? Why did people applaud it? Because many people think that's, that can't happen, impossible. Great was the voice from the audience. Thank you. GRMN. It's a very sporty vehicle focusing on driving performance. In the case of the Century, it's a chauffeur-driven car. So chauffeur-driven car with GRMNC specification, that's the reason why people left. But when for important events, I'll make sure that I'll ride in that car. So many cars were shown on Tokyo Motor Show, but last car you recommended first was sent to your own car. So can we move on to Tokyo Motor Show venue? 
please act as an MC before the event, whole event is over, simply driving black room tea. So we are connected with the Tokyo Motor Show. We have Mana Sugiyama, a gazoo lady, standing by at Tokyo Motor Show. Hi, this is Toyota booth of a Tokyo Motor Show. Good morning, I'm Mana of Sugiyama, gazoo lady. Morizo Kun and Ruki is working hard on behalf of Morizo. Good morning. Hi. Actually, this in this booth, Wheel of Cars is broadcast live. So please wave at those in the event. So many people are watching this event on the screen, monitor screen. So since there are so many guests at Tokyo Motor Show, let's interview some of them. May I? Good morning. Is this your first time to visit Motor Show? This is the third time that I visit uh, Tokyo Motor Show this year. So there are constant visitors. What is the impression of Toyota booth? GR cars. So fashionable, looks great. What is the impression? All the cars are very attractive. And there are so many people, guests, so you may be overwhelmed. But Morizo is beyond the screen, so please wave at him and uh, please enjoy the motor show as long as your time allows thank you very much and as you can see there are so many guests visiting tokyo motor show so many visitors and some of you in the audience you may be visiting tokyo motor show please do so after the event is over and i'll be joining you shortly and also in the drive, drive, Ride and Drive Challenge, I'll be with you once again. So see you later. So today at the reception desk, uh, there is this ticket for to uh, Tokyo Motor Show presented. So please make a beeline to the Tokyo Motor Show. You've been there twice, so you are here. Here, so you are not there, but you've been there twice. Well, twice was enough. I mean, after two months, people think that uh, there may be a doll instead of me right there. And then, so long as I'm there, I want to surprise people. If it was completely unexpected event, that's no fun. So let's move on to the next question. It's from Mr. Arihiko Isobe. So seeing a car that runs only on electricity, don't you miss something or feel a sense of loneliness? There's this exhibition of an EV in the Tokyo Motor Show, right? Well, the reason why there is a question like this probably is, well, there's this model Hachiroku, and Hachiroku has this EV version. And in MegaWeb, right here in the facility, I was asked to drive uh, the electric vehicle of Hachiroku. And my first impression back then, well, I said, oh, EV? That was the first thing that I said. And I think the initial acceleration is different for electric vehicles compared to gasoline engine cars. The initial acceleration is great for electric vehicles, but if you are not careful, EVs are all EVs, no different. Now, there are these brand manufacturers, and the brand manufacturers flavor their own brand for the past 100 years and uh, they have stick to particulars about their car. But what changed with electric vehicles is that we have now so many competitors and also autonomous driving became possible. So if you, we are not really careful, cars may become commodities. With electric vehicles? Well, with EVs and also autonomous driving. So uh, as a, a brand manufacturer that also develops EVs, we want this specific seasoning or flavor given to EVs as well. 
So the electric vehicles that are developed by the conventional auto manufacturers should have specific flavor. So what I miss is if EVs become commodities, that's something that I really regret. I don't want EVs to become commodities. So let's go on with the question. So don't you get scared at the wheel as a racing driver? Well, first of all, I'm not a racing driver. Well, you have participated in the race, but I'm a test driver. Well, racing race drivers, all of them are race drivers. They're in the audience. Race drivers have to really drive the cars faster and safer compared to ordinary drivers. Test drivers, no matter what kind of road and what kind of car, without any variability, be capable of driving the cars evenly. So there's a difference between the race driver and the test driver. And I'm still scared to drive a car. I'm always constantly scared. In uh, the 24-hour race of New Brinkink, I have to really uh, work together with race drivers. And I always tell them, I envy you. You don't have to be scared. M Mr. Oshima, are you here? I told you so. And Oshima told me that he's also scared. So he's a professional race driver. How many years? Well, please stand up and let everybody see. Nice to see you. My name is Oshima. I'm 30 years old, and I started participating in the race at 15, so it's about 15 years. And I am also very scared uh, to really uh, expand the envelope or go to the limit of my driving skill. And uh, sometimes in this rainy weather, uh, when on the highway they speed up uh, to really go ahead of other cars, I get really scared. And the race drivers don't speed their cars in towns and ordinary roads. That's why I understand the car and the performance. So I uh, uh, really go to the extreme, but I'm scared. And there's another driver at Roman in the preliminaries. This man was the fastest that the world record was achieved, Kamuri Kobayashi. Well, I am a race driver for a while. Well, how many years? Well, I started uh, taking part in the race in 14, and I'm 31, so how many years? 17? So. Uh, you're not running uh, on ordinary roads when you were a teenager. I started driving a racing cart when I was nine, and uh, in 11 or 12 years uh, old, when I was 11 or 12 years old, I became the champion in the adults race. And are you still scared? Sorry, I'm. I may be exceptional. I'm not so scared. Three minutes and 14 seconds. That's crazy. That's his time. Crazy is really a taboo word in the broadcast. Well, well he is unbelievable. Well, I observed the race, and I went to the pit. But looking at the race, it's really instantaneous. The car is oh, really running in front of me. And there are so many racing cars, uh, racing drivers there, but we'll run out of time if we interview everybody. So let me go on. So now I would like to introduce the unforgettable memory involving their cars of people who's in the audience. So getting started with the story of Satomi Kamu uh, Kamiya. When we went on a date in a car, when we went to see the Sea of Japan for the first time, when I fought with my boyfriend for the first time, in my unforgettable memories, there was always MR2. And what happened after that? 
So, would you like to ask Ms. Kamiya? Where are you, Ms. Kamiya? After that, what happened? So, my boyfriend is my husband who is seated next to me. What happened to MR2? What happened? Well, unfortunately, after we got married, I had to sell MR2. It was really a regret. And what are you driving right now? Sorry, a competitor's model. I'm sorry. So what are you driving? You want to know the model? Right now for the family, it's Volvo. Safety first. OK, I heard it again. Toyota's cars are also very safe. And then let's go on to the next story from Mayako Aida. My dad drove Corolla to an early morning golf practice. When I was a kid, I drove with him sitting in the passenger car. I was just looking at my dad swing, swinging his golf club, but I was very happy. Dad gave me canned cocoa that was very sweet and the morning glow and Corolla. The memory comes back to me when I see Corolla. Oh, really, a wonderful story. Cars is associated with memories and the music that I, I, you heard back then and the scenery, the morning glow. I think it never disappears in your memory. Thank you very much. That was Corolla, not Volvo. Thank you. Well, you won't know what she's driving, but we're running out of time, so let's go on. So this is a question concerning autonomous driving. Can an automated car become an Aisha, a beloved car? We must make sure that automated car also becomes Aisha, the beloved car. Why do I feel so strongly about Aisha amongst many industrial products? Cars are the only products that can win affection being called beloved. We never call refrigerator beloved fridge. We call my home instead of love home. So love cars or Aisha or beloved cars, the fact that people associate cars with love, it's not because we ask them to do so, but it's just spontaneous in the minds of uh, users. It's because cars are emotional being. That's what the relationship binds cars and people. The, actually, when I was in Athens in Greece, Mr. Mostoyoshi of the public relations told me about this. And her answer was, she said the automated car can surely become Aisha because she drives a roadster. Well, let's put that aside. That's not the main topic. So even if the car is automatically automated, automatically driven, driven, sometimes you might have to travel long distance. You may get tired. And if you are exhausted, the cars will listen to your state. Exhausted, the car will take you there. Or if you prefer to be driven, you can choose a full automated mode. And maybe the music that you really like uh, could be chosen in the car itself. And therefore, the automated car could become beloved car because they can really anticipate your emotions and feelings as well. I mean, from point A to point B, if car becomes just a mode of transportation, then cars will be relegated or reduced to a commodity. So if that is the case, whether a car deserves the word love is questionable. And in the case of cars, I mean, it moves people from one point to another point, but there is another meaning to the word move to move people emotionally, cause excitement and emotions. At the time of the Great East Japan earthquake, that was March 11th, 
And、uh, 20 something on the same month, in March, I was moving toward the Tohoku region, the earthquake affected region. And when I'm moving to Tohoku, that was the first day that the expressway heading to that area was open. Before that, it was completely blocked. And most of the cars on the highways were cars with the other prefectures' number plates. They were Transporting supplies, many people were looked concerned. So, actually, they were really transporting not just supplies but also emotions and feelings. So, it was quite clear that cars move people emotionally as well. And even in the case of automated cars, cars must be such a being. And of course, the most important purpose of having automated a car is to reduce traffic accident fatalities down to zero. That should be the ultimate objective of automated cars. Mr. Didier r u l u a and also Mr. Gil Pratt folk emphasize that as well. They certainly believe that. And also, fun to drive is another important element that needs to be ensured with automated cars. In the Tokyo Motor Show, the Yaris that participated in WRC was in. Um, display as well. If you press that dirt per hour cars, if you press that, the automated car should、uh, be able to drive like that. So, dirt road specification should be one of the choices. I mean, most of the people are against that idea, but such an option, if that is allowed, offered, the automated car can be also fun to drive car. No. A very important friend of Akio's is going to be with us in this event as well. Yes. Probably nobody in this audience knows that this person is my friend. Let's call him onto the stage. Everyone, well, you s m a l l small prop. Ichiro, I have been being a baseball player for some time. I became so nervous in the backstage, I just wanted to hide behind those sunglasses. That's why I have those. But I simply cannot keep it on, so I'll remove it. But this is one of the serious ones. Once he came with huge. Sunglasses. So he's a very cute guy. Miss Kotani, good to see you again. Delighted to see you again. So, previously, when three of us were together, we were really great enjoying ourselves. We had a great time. May I sit down? Of course, please. So, Ichiro is a special guest for this event, and they are great friends together. To Akio, what does Ichiro mean to you, Akio san? What does he mean to you? Why are you such great friends? He's a vision player, major player. That's well known. Just yesterday, some people said that my pants were too short, and so my legs, the shin, is appearing. Much worse than that. And then Ms. Kotani commented, I mean, you're an old man, 44 years old. I don't want to see the hairy sheen. And then、uh, Akio bought me those socks. So these are the presents from Akio. So it was his birthday about a week ago, 22nd of October. And I'm now 44 years old. And you know, Ichiro is always dressed like this. It's not that he wants to show his sheens, but when he stands up, it looks normal. But I am lacking something that's clear in this. And yesterday, more of his sheens were showing. 
he wants to show some of his shins, I guess, because people say they are so ugly. So I just want to show a bit of that. So please look at those naked shins. Can you stand up once again? This length of those pants, wearing such boots, so to speak. Those are his trademarks, so to speak. Are you interested in that? Before this got established, it took a while. Well, for people to accept this, yes, it did take some time for people to give up on me, so to speak. So that's your philosophy, right? As a Japanese, you, when Japanese field outfielder, you went to the United States uh, to be a baseball player there, and amongst many noises, Ichiro always wanted to establish your own unique style. And after a while, people stopped criticizing that. Well, it took time. Usually it takes time, but unless you do that, you cannot get yourself accepted, and you cannot show who you are or what you are all about. So it it takes energy and time, but you just endure that and persevere, and especially in the United States, the unknown world, and I play as a baseball player all by myself, so that's what I wanted to live by. So there must be some scary moments of fear that is engendered in your mind when jumping into the unknown world. When you talk about unknown world for the first time in 2001, I went to the United States and I'm reminded of that. Everybody was opposed to that. Stop doing that. I mean, you're talking about outfielder. You can never be successful in the United States as an outfielder. But I just wanted to do that. I have been told that there is much more competitive world outside of Japan in the baseball. So all I wanted to do was, because I wanted to do that, I didn't think I was able to do that. I would be successful. I didn't care about that. My pure feeling was I just wanted to do that. I mean, thinking of the consequences, listen to others to make your decision, that's not something I do. That's not me. I just simply cannot stand that. And my life has always been like that. When I went to high school from junior high, you're so thin, you can't be a regular player in the very famous baseball focused high school. When I became a professional baseball player, everybody said, you can't make a professional baseball. So that happens. Everybody is opposed. And I realized that made, made me realize there are so many people who want me to fail. Of course, some of them were really concerned about what would happen to me, but there are so many people who didn't want me to be successful. So that made me think that since I found something I really, truly wanted to do, all I need to do is just move on, aiming at that. Can you think of the expressions change after a while, the expressions on those people who oppose you, and they stop complaining? Nobody said, I'm sorry, I stopped tried to stop you to go to the United States. Nobody said that. After I met Akio, I found so many things that I echoed me. I mean, actually, you look at him, you feel there's a scary element in him. I'm like a very pure puppy, so to speak, the Shiba dog. But Akio and what's behind his eyes is still scary. I feel that way even today. Do I have that? Yes, you do. So since 18 months ago or so, we've been I've been covering both of you quite intensively. And he has 350,000 people working for Toyota throughout the world. So their lives are on his shoulders. And he's a third generation or maybe fourth generation of the company. And what your grandfather couldn't do, you are trying to accomplish that. So those are composite reasons that drove him to do what he's doing today. So pushing aside all those challenges, 
he is trying to enter the unknown world. I never find you stationary. You never know whether it's going to be successful, but you are going to try out anything. I mean, not doing anything, not trying anything, just waiting is just postponing things. And for something you really need to defy or challenge against, you're just evading them. You're trying to escape from those challenges. And as Ichiro just said so correctly, in my case as well, in my own corporate life, if anything, I was regarded as some untouchable being because of my family name, and you're the member of the founding family. Now, what happens then? People don't approach me. And people get nervous, so to speak. They don't like that. Or some people tend to be very strict against me. And then they feel that I might appeal to people above me. So what people preferred to do was to avoid me, so to speak. So whatever I did, people thought, let's see what they've got. And if I fail, they said, as had been expected. And despite all those, I continued to do what I do because I didn't want to be beaten, so to speak. Since I met Ichiro, never want to use never want to be beaten, so that's the trademark. Never wanted to be bested. I mean, tr not trying something new to eat. I mean, even if you try it and if you don't like it, that's OK. But if you don't try it, you can't tell what it's all about. So even if I fail, I prefer being beaten but trying out anyway. I much prefer that. So I can fully understand. So I don't like to be bested. That's a feeling I always have. And that's what drives me even today. And on the previous occasion, when you had dialogue between you, there was one question Nichiro asked of Akio and asked about field hockey, right? And you, your question was, why can you turn a pinch into an opportunity? And I, my answer was, a pinch, a difficult situation is also the pinch as well. I was a field hockey player when I was in school. And unlike uh, like a soccer football game, we have the PK in field soccer as well. And hitter is located 15 yards from the goal. And my role as a player was to stop that guy. And as you move closer to that striker, it's safer. Isn't it scary? Yes, it is. But if you're in the middle distance, you get hit by a ball. But you get closer and closer to the hitter, it's safer there. So in some way, as I talked with Ichiro, those are the things that I learned physically speaking through my own um, sports experience. So since then, every time I have discussion, talk with Ichiro, and something that was in my mind, although I couldn't describe it by words, but that was able to be clarified. Although we live in a different world, but he has really reached the summit and pinnacle of his own game. And that was made clear to me as well. I could understand what was in my mind was not really clearly identified. So that I learned gave me a break. It's just the opposite. That's the sort of learning I get from you. So let's move on to the next question. No, which do you prefer, to be praised or told to be better, encouraged to work? Of course I want to be praised. Who would like to be told that I have to be better? Well, to be encouraged, sometimes you would be motivated to work harder. Isn't there anybody in the audience? Well, well talking about the principle, 
It's easy to say it's great, but it's difficult to tell someone, frankly, that someone has to be better. So I think if I'm told to be better, I'll first of all think about that individual who told me to be better, whether he is fully qualified to tell me so. And I would be very happy if I'm praised, and I'll try to work harder maybe. But after all, people silently would think that I need to work harder. So if you're praised, you shouldn't be arrogant. And you should think on your own silently that there is much room to be better. But I don't think anybody would tell you that you are great. Or nobody would tell me you did a great job. Well, I think to, you've done a good job is something that your superior would only be able to tell you. And nobody would tell me good morning or greet me. Well, would somebody tell you that the, I did a good job? Well, everybody thinks that I am their subordinate, so I'm always told that I did a good job. But which do you prefer? I like you or I hate you? Of course, you get happy if you're told I like you, but to dislike someone requires energy, so I hate you is really difficult to directly communicate to anybody. So that means if someone tells you that they hate you, you can turn that individual into your avid follower or fan. But if they remain silent, it's difficult. Because I hate you means that you're, uh, that person is interested in you. So as an evaluation, scale of evaluation, uh, this, these extremes shouldn't be really something that you're stuck to. Because if someone tells you to be better, then you will be stuck to that skill. Well, I had my mentor of driving, Mr. Naruse, would never compliment me or praise me. But I want to be praised by Mr. Naruse someday, and I'm working hard. And internally, I have come to take up a role of a master driver, and I realized that I shouldn't praise as people so easily. Because once you praise uh, some individual, that would be the pinnacle or the maximum level of that person. Well, it takes 20 or 30 years uh, to really develop and improve that uh, the model. And uh, so until the very last minute of the completion of the development, I don't, I've realized that there is no ultimate goal that would satisfy uh, everybody that would require no further additional improvement. But I am very conscious that I have to really, until the very last minute of the development completion, that we have to continue fighting and working until the car is handed over to the customer. There are so many people involved internally uh, working on the development of the cars. And this would, of course, be related to the evaluation of that model for the next 20 or 30 years. Uh, so history or market or the process that we went through for the development would be part of the evaluation. So to be better, to work harder is something that I tell people. Sometimes I internally think that I should just simply praise. And Morizo in my mind would tell me that I should be more forthcoming. So sometimes Morizo would be the good part of myself. And as a master driver, just like my mentor, Mr. Naruse, was to me, I've come to realize how I should interact with the people and what I should tell people. Now that you mentioned Morizo, the next question is, uh, were you able to really make an improvement coming out of your own shell? In case of Mr. Toyota, you have two names. Akio Toyoda and Morizo. 
In case of Ichiro, you have your own name, Ichiro Suzuki and Ichiro. So, what are the advantages and disadvantages? And how did you embrace them? And how can you manage these、uh, two identities? I'm not sure about the advantages and the disadvantages, but one day suddenly, this name Ichiro. I should say all of a sudden, using the analogy of sumo wrestling,、uh, this wrestler suddenly one day became the sumo champion. And so I had to really work hard to not to lag behind and catch up with this image of Ichiro. And one day when I Scored a record, suddenly I、uh, wasn't really conscious of how people looked at me. And so until that day, I was in this isolated room eating food. But beyond that day, I'm not really sure whether that would be a step up. But clearly, there was this change in myself that I can eat openly. So right now, Ichiro Suzuki and Ichiro are integrated. Well, Ichiro is part of me. And what about Akio? Well, this name, it was really burdensome. And when I took part in the race in order to hide my real name, I adopted Morizo. And Of course, I cannot really escape from the status Akio Toyoda. And I've been trying to hide who I was, not to introduce myself on occasions. But the, one day I had to meet the Paralympiads. And be, since that day, I think I changed. I went on a skiing championship within the Toyota group, and I had to be the first skier going down the slope. And when I was practicing, those Paralympiad skiers. Uh, Ohinata san, when、uh, I met him in Athens and I practiced with him, and we got on a lift to go to the top of the hill, and Ohinata san and myself、uh, were riding the lift, and I wasn't sure how I should really behave.、Uh, I wasn't sure whether I should support her. Or give her a hand, and she told me I need to do nothing. And I realized that to think that I have to help her who is on a chair ski, and that's really from the perspective of a supporter or a supervisor or something、uh, who is really at a higher status. But these people are constant fighters. And they don't need any support of other people. They have the fighter spirit and they wanted to be treated equally as ordinary people. And since then, the Paralympiads, even if they seem to be handicapped on the hand, I decided、uh, to extend my hand to shake hands. The other day, I was in Hukuoka and a silver medalist in Rio. Michishita san. I had an experience to practice together with Michishita san. Michishita san is a blind runner, and this blind runner would have to have this accompanying co runner for 42.195 kilometers, and、uh, there's this string that they hold, and they call that vessel. And the, what they call the vessel,、uh, the rope that they hold would be the link to the co runner. And 
I, she couldn't see, but I extended my hand to shake her hand. And they are really taking this as their own individuality, not as a handicap. And they really focus on their individuality. With that experience, up to that point, I really had felt that uh, being a Kyo Toyoda uh, was a big burden for me. It was really heavy weight, but I realized that that was my individuality, and I'm able to do some things because I am a Kyo Toyoda. And this is a lesson I learned from the Paralympiads, and I now feel much freer to really bear this name. So both of you had been able to break out of the mold and you had been enlightened perhaps. Yes, up to that experience, I tried to hide my status. And all the Paralympiards are very bright and they are fighters and they are have optimism. So if I'm allowed to be the president as a Kyo Toyoda, I would like to use my individuality for somebody else. And I think that was the moment that I was able to come out of my shell. So the moment, do you remember the moment you were able to come out of what your shell? No, I don't remember that moment, and I'm not really sure whether I have succeeded coming out of my shell. But being looked at by other people, the evaluation of others are really not that important for me. 216 hits, was it 162? Sorry. 216, that's really, that's not enough. 262 is the number that I really smacked. And so recently, I don't have this reserved room in the stadium uh, where I really enjoy the game. I sit together with uh, the other people. And uh, and you have this drink under the rail guard in Shimbashi. Well, Japanese people are polite. Uh, they may realize, uh, but in Tokyo, the Tokyoists would not really tell you that they have realized. And uh, in Nagoya, it's really a different atmosphere. Should we go drinking at Shimbashi under uh, the rail guard? Well, if two of you are drinking in Shimbashi, well, Ichiro is really the envy of the salaried workers, right? I wonder how people look at Mr. Toyoda and how they feel. So all of you have been exposed uh, to Mr. Toyoda. What is the impression? It's uh, about 60 minutes since you met Mr. Toyoda in person. Can Is there any volunteer after 60 minutes? What's your impression of Mr. Toyoda? Now, how do you feel meeting Mr. Toyoda in person? Oh, you're a courageous person. So I think you are really polite in the, the Japanese language. In the Japanese language, you would use the honorifics in a polite way of speaking. Well, I was working. Uh, I joined the sports club when I went to uh, junior high and high school. And of course, if you're junior to me, I wouldn't use the polite tense of the Japanese. But Mr. Toyoda is really scary. His eyes are scary. So maybe I was brought up in a, a very good family or good part.
Any volunteer impression on Akio or impression on Ichiro? Mr. Akio. I was only able to see Mr. Toyota on television, and I thought that he is a person up in the clouds, but in the public hearing of the U.S. Congress, you were shedding tears, and I've come to be exposed to the humane aspect of Mr. Toyota. And Ichiro, of course, constantly appears on television. You're a wonderful person, but I'm now very moved to be able to meet Mr. Ichiro in person. Thank you very much. That public hearing of the U.S. Congress, that was a major turning point for me. And uh, since then, I have been talking about this with Mr. Toyota, and I'm really impressed of how you were able to overcome that difficulty. Well, I thought that that was the end of my career of being president, CEO of TMC, but I didn't think that my life would be lost, and it's more scary to really go around the course of Nuremberg. So I was prepared. And uh, whenever I have to speak in front of a large audience, I'm a human. So naturally, I'd be happy if I'm praised. That's really the inherent nature of me. But if I've come to think that I want to be praised or evaluated, I feel pressure at the same time. But I think there are always people who truly understand what I am and who I am. And eventually, uh, the number of people who are your supporters would increase. And when I went to the United States to attend the public hearing of the Congress, uh, the senators and the congressmen told me uh, that this is a wonderful occasion to publicize and promote uh, the company. And of course, the, they may ask very tough questions, but pretend that you don't understand English and be, stay calm. That was what I was told uh, by a young uh, U.S. congressperson. So. Being able to receive such pieces of advice probably comes from the fact that Toyota as a company had had a very good relationship with these politicians in the United States that allowed myself to receive a very positive and friendly advice. And that's all I've been doing many things. But if I hand over, for example, the baton of the top management of the company, I think the relationship eventually would be the extension of what you have been working so hard to establish. But I think there's no end to what you can do. And I really empathize with Ichiro. That was really a pinch for you. Yes, that was a great pinch. But after all, that became a major chance for your company, right? Yes, I love cars. I was really rescued by that fact. So, at, well, when you are encountered with a pinch, you can't say, I still love cars and uh, be optimistic on the same instance. So. Until that point, what you have been doing really would be something that would really be concentrated and condensed and be reflected in how you respond to the pinch. Well, the, uh, the impression had changed after uh, the Larry King live show. Uh, that was the night of the public hearing. And this was a live TV show, and it couldn't be edited because there was a live broadcast, and I had to answer the questions of Larry King. And just like today, I really expose everything, and I have 
my naked self be exposed to the, pub the public, working harder, trying to be better, to continue constantly, as long as I don't forget those things. Uh, well, I, uh, Ichiro gets mad when, you, when I tell him you're about to retire. Well, retire around 50? No. Well, uh, when he became 41, he said that he wants to continue playing baseball until uh, his age exceeds his uh, bib number. Well, 50 at the youngest, at minimum. I would continue playing baseball until 50, but that is at minimum 50. So then there's a possibility of we'll continue to play until 55. Well, if I don't say this openly, I don't think it would be possible to keep playing. And there is this big prejudice on age and uh, there's no American baseball player uh, who kept playing uh, beyond 50 years of age. And uh, so, no matter how famous your name be had become, or, or if it is possible to change your name and your appearance, and if I take part in the game, even if I get older, I'm quite confident that everybody can really evaluate my skills still uh, in my 40s or 50s. But there's this big prejudice on age, and everybody knows me, so it's very difficult. So do I still have time to go on to the next question? Maybe time is very tight. Well, you didn't ask. Uh, nobody told me how they felt about Ichiro. OK, so let's do so. Who thought that your impression of Ichiro had changed today? Yes, my impression of Ichiro, well, just like the emperor of Japan, I think you are the face of this country. That's really a far exaggeration. Well, just like Mr. Toyoda, Akio Toyoda, uh, I really respect the two of you, and Ichiro is really representing this country. Well, I wondered, well, I thought that the person looked alike, like uh, Ichiro, but I am now so nervous having Ichiro in front of me, and I am really communicating on the social network, telling everybody that Ichiro is here. Well, I thought it was Ramos, a soccer player, but uh, now, coming to, well, with those wonderful words, I cannot really expose my bare skin. I should have my pants uh, be longer. Well, the other day, a person that I met told me that Toyota, the company, and Toyota Akio is the treasure, a precious treasure for Japan. And Ichiro, no matter what country you are in, in the world, you are really the face of this country. So I'm pleased. I'm very happy. He looks very happy. OK. So one short word. For the two of you, we've been talking about Aisha, loving car, and I, meaning love in English. No. What is love for you? Have Do you really f think very deeply about love and what love is to you? Well, while you're trying to come up with the answer, Ms. Toyoda, well, Ms. Kotani, you need to answer first. Yes. You keep asking us questions, but you need to answer this question. So this is something that you should answer rather than talking about love, or the middle-aged men talking about love. Ms. Kotani, you should answer this question. What is love to me? For me, I realized that that was love in my mind when 
my child became sick and if if the child improves and gets well staking my life in return I realized that that was love that was a wonderful story rather than the two of us answering you look so charming and cute you don't need to hide your face so Ichiro So, talking about baseball and also in the socializing with people, it's the same thing. But you shouldn't expect something in return. Don't expect what you do to be returned. So, in baseball, practice would never betray you, is what people say. But that attitude probably is based on the assumption that if you do a certain thing that you would be returned of something. Of course, really making effort, train yourself is very important, but that has no assurance that you would be able to really record a major score that you'd be a successful player. And I think in human relationship, the same thing holds true, that I'm doing this much so you should return my affection. That's not love. And uh, so you don't expect something to be returned. That's love for me. So in my capacity, I have been making a great variety of decisions. And the, some people cannot really support my decision. If I make a difficult decision, uh, first of all, try not to understand and, uh, and with the lack of understanding cannot really follow me or understands but cannot really support my decision. And uh, in this democratic system, everybody's view should be represented in the final outcome, the decision that I make. That is what I have to try to do. But I cannot make everybody happy in making a decision. A decision always would make people unhappy. I had experienced this numerous times. So beyond a certain point in time, understanding and becoming a supporter of me uh, will uh, I, I think I've come to realize that I've come to a stage where I can forgive these people. And of course, there are people who really want to object, no matter what kind of decision is made, and uh, be very cynical. So I don't pay attention to these people. As long as there is love, it's just simple confrontation. And I think the general view oftentimes is just looking at this situation in a confrontational setting. That's simplistic. But life is not that simple. It's not black or white. You have to try to, first of all, win the understanding of the people. I make such effort, but if you forgive or if you dismiss, well, you have to have love. Otherwise, it is really inorganic. And so if you become a person who can't love or who doesn't understand love, 
you would no longer be in a position to be able to create a car that is called Aisha, a loved car. Well, people say since you became CEO of uh, TMC that warmth is uh, something that people can feel from your company because Toyota is a major company representing Japan and being a major business in the country, there was this impression that it was quite cold. But since you became president, I feel warmth from Toyota, the company. So how to really materialize this warmth, I think is fully related to all the employees, uh, including the rank and file employees, uh, which really has this repercussion in the general public. I'm really happy to be praised. Yes, I'm happy to be praised. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. At the very last question, I really couldn't stay calm. Well, Ichiro, you made her cry. No, it wasn't me. Well, normally when I am with Ichiro, Ichiro really attacks me and bullies me, but recently she fights back. So time has run out, and thank you. So a selfie, selfie with everybody. I haven't heard about that. So stand with our backs against the audience. And that's on the Instagram. So we'll just stand there. You're really a handsome guy, so don't look foolish. Thank you so very much, Ms. Kotani and Ichiro. Despite this downpour with the typhoon approaching, I'm not wet at all, so thank you so very much for sharing the stage with me. And thanks to these two friends, Morizo was able to share with you his true self and what's on his mind. Whenever I'm with these two guys, I do feel that a new drawer in my mind is open, so it really was a very valuable, precious moment for me as well. Well, I've been made nervous, so let me wear sunglasses once again. Thank you so much. Ms. Kodani and Ichiro and the conversation we had together. What was your impression? Thank you very much, all of you. About seven, I first met Kodani-san at a racing circuit in Sendai for a TV interview seven years ago. And what very much impressed me then was that Rather than just focusing on me, she turned her microphone toward the mechanics, staff members, and others who were supporting our efforts on the front line. And last year, too, when she came to do an interview on human resources development, she went to where the action was taking place and spent much more time doing interviews with the people there than she did interviewing me. So Kotani-san is always turning an eye toward those with whom I work. Although the newscaster might be the only person you see on the screen when you watch TV, it takes many like-minded people working together to get the program made. I think her having long experienced the necessity of working with others to survive in the demanding world of television is exactly why she understands that I, too, am battling along with others by my side. 
Ichiro, as the first Japanese major league outfielder, challenged what others dared not and has achieved numerous accomplishments. And without comparing himself to others, he always takes on himself. I will never forget what Ichiro, who carries on a solitary and lonesome struggle, said as he reached the monumental milestone of 3,000 Major League hits. He said, the instant I made it, my teammates and fans were happy. That was when I realized that what is more important for me than a number called 3,000 is the fact that what I do can make those other people happier than myself. Struggling together with those around you, struggling for the sake of those around you and those who support you in the things that they do and in the things that they say, Kodani-san and Ichiro are always reminding me of what I cherish most. I'm not sure how they might feel, but I see them as dear friends who are of kindred spirit, even though we fight on in different worlds. And today, I have the same feelings for all of you as I do for Kodani-san and Ichiro. Drama about Ichiro Toyoda, the founder, and his friends. You did it. This is the greatest moment for all of us. This is a Chevrolet I just purchased. So the secret confidential research, is this related to this? We are going to take this apart and look into the parts and components. Left and addressed, the Japanese automotive market is going to be dominated by foreign cars. For the interest of Japan, somebody has to start. Let's do it. Let's do it. Eighty years ago, when Kichiro, my grandfather, started making cars, even though some people said it was impossible, there were those around him who said, let's do it. With automobiles now at the kind of turning point that comes only once every 100 years, there are times where I too call out to various people saying, let's do it. However, I don't intend to do that here today. That's because going the other way around, I sense that I can hear, let's do it, coming from all of you. So many people gathered here today in response to an invitation from Morizo. And there are many people taking part on the receiving end of this webcast. The thoughts and stories about cars that you shared with us. The faces of everyone that I can see from here. For me, they sound like a big Let's do it from all of you. No matter what form they shall come to take, I want cars to always be something that people call beloved car with great affection. 
That's something I will continue to stand by, and I will continue to fight for those who love cars and with those who love cars. To the urging of let's do it that I have received from everyone, the best way for me to respond is to face things straight on. Limited is what I can do as one person. It is because I am together with all of you that I can believe there is a future we can build for cars. To you all, thank you so very much. And I look forward to our continued relationship going forward. more important for me than a number called 3000 is the fact that what I do can make those other than myself happy. Cars will be fun for the next 100 years as well. That's the kind of society of mobility that I want to achieve together with you. Cars will be fun for the next 100 years as well. That's the kind of society of mobility that I want.